advice makes him famous. Hello, and welcome to the Saladcast. On Saturday, the 20th of March, 2021, I'm your host, Dan Train. Joining me today, Zachary Burgess. Still here. And Robert Kemp. Still not loving police. <laughs> Still. It's, it's the CEMP. <laughs> <laughs> CEMP? Okay, sorry, yeah. what am I supposed to see? <laughs> what am I to um, see? Robert Semp. Robert <laughs> Semp. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it rhymed with D. Uh, it doesn't work with K. Shit. Okay. It's the, the DRE. I mean, you could say key, I guess. It's key RE. It's the DFJT. JT. Justin Timberlake. What? <laughs> oh, that's my name. Oh, yeah. That's D T. Yeah, I just added in my full initials just oh, for, the, oh. for the for the fanciness. For GDPR. <laughs> Disinfiguate from other DTs. Uh uh-uh, uh for sure. I've been watching some of that hip hop evolution. Oh yeah. I've only watched the first four of it on Netflix, but but it's alright. It's like it's 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 quite interesting. In a weird way, I almost want it to be more about the music, but that's not what they're going for, is it? It's more about the soul and the culture and the kind of, yeah. I mean, they don't have they don't play songs that much. You no. have to know the songs already, uh, mostly. I mean, they play them, but then they talk over them. <laughs> yeah, obviously. But yeah, I mean, because it starts off with pretty old school hip hop with from the beginning, so it might not be so the block parties. Yeah, so interesting to you. Well, I don't know. No, of course, it's interesting, but of course, you know. Those acts aren't as famous now. <laughs> Obviously, there's quite sure. nascent DJE stuff before it gets into like full on rap. Yeah, it's fun though because it's like the. Uh, I suppose it's obvious, really, but I didn't, that whole um, a bit with the riots and like, yeah. meaning that everyone managed to yeah that everyone managed to get hold of equipment and that was how it all sort of yeah. blew up was because everyone stole everything. <laughs> I just love how they managed to steal electricity. <laughs> like they would just like reroute power from the street lights or something and just like plug it in. That must have been super dangerous. Super dangerous, yeah. It's probably how a lot of those buildings got on fire. Yeah. Well the Bronx was mostly on fire for the whole decade, wasn't it? I think yeah. of the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. It's Reagan time. Reaganomics. What is Reagan? No, actually, that's not, that's not the podcast. <laughs> that's like that. it's, not the it's, yeah. it's Reagan's economic policies, isn't it? Yeah, I just don't know why they like they were so stand out. Like why? Uh, well, it's just why like they've been named? Yeah, I think a lot of things just get people's name attached to it. Although, like that's a more modern thing, I suppose. Like it, it's getting more and more common. That it's just like just jam whoever came up with this name on the front of it, and then we'll just call it that for now. <laughs> Do you think that's more common than it used to be? Well, I think like it's been ramping up. Like it, my well, civilization. The trouble is that like. You only have one name, and so you can't have more than one thing, really. Otherwise, it gets too confusing. <laughs> so yeah. You, you only get to be known for one thing, so you better hope it's a good one. <laughs> what if you're good in two different fields? Then you're into them. <laughs> or, or you accidentally like uh, got something named after you. That, yeah, yeah, early in life, that was something you were bad at, and then later on, you did something genius. <laughs> of course, that doesn't really happen very often, does it? Let's face it. Most no. people seem to have done the amazing thing by the time they're 25. You know, George Harrison was 25 when the Beatles broke up. Yeah. <laughs> That's just insane. Yeah. I hate other people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's But they're the, fa- they're the ones that get famous, right? They're a very small subset. <laughs> and there's plenty of people famous who did do anything good. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's also very true. <laughs> And for those, you can feel good about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Or can you? Is, is that a weird, like, isn't that sort of a slightly strange discussion uh, well, where it's like 50% of the people on TV really didn't earn it? Or have any yeah. talent? I mean, Piers Morgan had a talent for winding people up. I mean, that's still a talent. I'm kind of useful talent. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm kind of TV series. I'm kind of counting that. I mean, he may be loathsome. He may be 
only one rung above Katie Hopkins in that sort of yeah in that land. But still, it, it's a talent, right? To be that hated and still be on TV. <laughs> he was a survivor. I don't really understand because yeah. he he totally screwed it with the with the newspaper and got completely fired, right? And that, and then he managed to come back by going to America and annoying them, <laughs> and then and then and they he sent him back here. Send it back here, and he is suddenly it was like, Oh, yeah, that guy who did something really, really terrible. Uh, we'll, we'll put him back on TV. That'll be controversial. What does he have to say? Oh, oh, stuff, bad stuff, repeatedly. But hey, people watch it. I mean, hating on Piers Morgan, we've been doing that for like 30, 30 years. <laughs> it's quite, it is quite a uh. It's one of those comics easy fallback jokes, isn't it? It's like, oh, I need something bad to compare this to. Oh, Piers Morgan. He'll do. Well, that, that's pretty much just what we were talking about with, the, with your name getting attached to one thing. Yeah. He's got attached to that one joke. <laughs> I mean, the joke in Private Eye was he was referred to as Piers Moron, right? And then they started putting Morgan in quotes. <laughs> so he was Piers Morgan Moron. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Morgan might be a stage name. Oh, I don't. Know. I mean, I doubt it. His ego is too big for that. It's so not, to, it's not to... like he's Piers Morgizzle <laughs> or P P P P Mizzle. <laughs> and here's, <laughs> here's, the, and here's today's opinion on the news with P Mizzle. <laughs> I don't know if that sounds rate. like some kind of bathroom cleaning product or something. The pea mizzle. Pea mizzle. <laughs> Tears through lime scale. Like. Like. <laughs> what, what tears through lime scale? Hmm. Pea mizzle, I suppose. Like peers tears through decency? Ah! How do you deal with lime scale in your kettle, Zach? It gets a regular descaling. You just pour the shit in it and then it tastes good for several days afterwards. I've never met descaling. What's he like? Probably uh, better than P Mizzle. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Descaler. <laughs> they're, they're, they're fierce competitors in the uh, kitchen cleaning department and home home maintenance. <laughs> I feel like descaling is definitely the kind of dumb, like, bad rap name joke that you could actually exist. Yeah. <laughs> probably in UK grime. Not so much in, in <laughs> yeah, like yeah, American probably. gangster rap, but uh <laughs> Descaler. It's my man Stormzy. Chilling with Descaler. Banging out a hot one. <laughs> Banging out a hot one. <laughs> That's how grime works. Isn't That's it? another thing, a grimy thing that happens in the bathroom. <laughs> you can't, I didn't, didn't realise the pun on grime. Uh, <laughs> really? I'm so slow. Is grime a, a British... I mean, obviously, the grime, the, the form of music is a British term, but is grime a, partic- a particularly British word, or is that... They say grime in... America and elsewhere, don't they? I guess, as in yeah. The, as in the the kind of caked in dirt. What is grime? It's like <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. Specific... it's like grime. Yeah, it's, it's like grime. <laughs> is it like a is it like a certain damp dirt? Yeah, it sort of. Does that have to be, or is, is it, it like it, well, is it it's on a scale damp. of dirtiness that you you go up from like dust and then there's like grime and then there's just straight up. Gunk. <laughs> so like, <laughs> where is it on the scale? I want to listen to some UK gunk. <laughs> oh man, straight up gunk. <laughs> straight up UK gunk. It's just gunk from the underground. Gunk with a donk on it. Pirate gunk radio. <laughs> yeah. You can't descale gunk. He's not hardcore enough. <laughs> no, descale is definitely grime. <laughs> what do you use for gunk? P Mizzle. <laughs> I don't know. P Mizzle might be less than the <laughs> scale. That's true. Yeah. Do the streets count as grime? Do we need to call Frank Skinner? <laughs> do, you, do you reckon Frank, Frank Skinner is great at getting rid of lime scale? 
he might be more on a P mizzle kind of level. <laughs> <laughs> he did a song about lockdown and COVID because everyone is. Oh has no! There. What's he saying now? I can't. I can't remember them exactly, but he has a lot of puns on politician names going on, and that he <laughs> sort of says them, but sort of doesn't at the same time. I thought the streets had split up, even though it's one person. <laughs> Like years ago, did he did he like yeah, reform he's... his own? Yeah, I think name. he came back last year, right? Or at least I heard him, heard him do an interview on the radio last year. Ironic because there's no one else on the street. Yeah. Well, maybe that's given. Uh, maybe that's why the market's wide open. Yeah, he now owns the streets. He is the streets. He's the only one there. Speaking of being known for only one thing <laughs> and making a terrible transition to. Read a different random topic. <laughs> but. but back to a topic that I've brought up several times in random sections, going back to YouTube adverts. Yay! Hey. Well, firstly, I mean, real briefly mentioned that for some reason the, the ad blocking adverts have started appearing again. <laughs> Brilliant. So those are back. But also, weirdly, another thing that's back um, has been Old Spice. Pop up, pop up, power. Yeah, but not the Terry Crews dude, the other dude. <laughs> oh, the I'm on a horse dude. Yes, the I'm on a horse dude. Traditional old spice. Yeah, the, the, the non insanity old spice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about non insanity, the lesser insanity. <laughs> it's a different kind of drug, isn't it? It's like, I guess Terry Crews is some kind of amphetamines. Yeah, pretty much. I think, I think I'm, I'm on a horse like, guy is probably just ecstasy and weed. They they reshowed a couple of the classic ones, like the old adverts. Two so tickets a, to that thing you love. <laughs> there's a new one with him. The tickets are not diamonds. <laughs> there's a new there's a new advert with him, but it's animated, which like ruins the whole point of the joke. Yeah, what? Like, of course, when it's animated, he can just be anywhere and be doing anything because that's just an animation. That's like it's like that Mr. Bean animated program. Like, oh that's god, not yeah. as much fun. <laughs> like it's supposed to be physical comedy. If you just animate it, and yeah, Mr. Bean the cartoon. What a travesty! That actually ran longer than the actual Mr. Bean. Yeah, it's because it's easy to make. And Mr. Bean has this quality that because there's no language of dialogue, really, that it just is apparently has appeal across all cultures. Mm. So it's just shown everywhere in the world. Well, I imagine the cartoon must be similar, right? I don't remember it having yeah, that much dialogue. Same. Yeah, it's the same thing. I don't know. <laughs> like, is he on a horse still? Or even the well, animated there a, horse? There was the hang glider. <laughs> He was on a hang glider at one point. I wasn't <laughs> really not, paying that much attention. I was just like, not, this is bad. <laughs> but he wasn't actually on a hang glider. Now, no. That would, have, that would have been impressive. Like, that would have been upping the stakes for the filming, having all that stuff happening, and he's on a hang glider. <laughs> down, <laughs> flying down a mountain. Yeah, I can definitely see how that would work. Like, you'd reach up off frame, and then his arms would just be on the bar of <laughs> yeah. the hang glider. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you had like Glastonbury tickets and you really wanted to go, and they just turned into diamonds. So, <laughs> I guess you, uh, could, you could probably buy, buy more. Glass you could buy more, yeah. <laughs> but they'd all be sold out at that point. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Luckily, I have tickets for whenever Glastonbury eventually comes back on. <laughs> Not this year, I guess. I think the only tickets I'm in possession of are you may run 5k at some point around it. For <laughs> wow. Until then, you're not allowed. No, I'm not allowed. That's why I got Clayton. I'm not going around Ipswich. I'm going out of Ipswich. <laughs> totally different thing. What YouTube adverts have I got? They, they, I've they <laughs> had some actual good ones from Haringey Council, from my local council. Really? From, from, yeah, like... Um, to telling people, not me, but telling targeted <laughs> YouTube adverts, telling people to get vaccinated, basically. Dan, right. get vaccinated. That would be yeah, the creepiest yeah. ad in well, the world. I mean, like, Dan, Dan, get vaccinated. We're talking to you, I've been seeing Dan. the like, generic Suffolk ones. Hmm. It's like, people of Suffolk, stop going outside still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> people of Suffolk, That's you good. suck. <laughs> I, um, I tweeted one. It's talking about like weird personalized advertising. Like I, I tweeted out the other day, it's like um, 
I, I, I realized that spam or mail mergey marketing that I may have signed up for, like weirdly don't find annoying. Yeah, it's, it floods your inbox and sometimes it doesn't get filtered out and yada, yada, yada. But I don't feel bad about deleting that quite so much. Quite so much as I feel personally attacked when or irritated when I'm getting marketing personally written by a human directed at me being all like, do you want to? quote for removals do you want a quote for removals do you want to, mm. do, how about a quote we realized you're probably moving soon when it's getting kind of fine do you want a quote and i'm i, I literally i don't wouldn't normally get engaged but i did i said so you, you are very persistent and quite irritating <laughs> yes <laughs> leave us alone <laughs> thank but, you like like yeah it happened because I, I tried to sign up to a um a site that I thought would be like compare the market, but for removals, and oh, it would just right. throw some numbers at me, so I could get an idea. Yeah, um, as sort of as a contingency, because we're not planning on using removals; we're planning yeah. on doing it ourselves, which may be madness, but we'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, so, it, but it didn't do that. At the end of the process, it said, "It said we've now contacted a whole load of people, and they they will get back to you." And it's like, it's like, no, no that's <laughs> not that's not what I thought you'd. Oh no. In fairness, no one got in contact apart from this one agency that, that suspiciously one agency that is now like, you can trust us, you can trust us. And I'm like, I do not trust you. They did. They were kind enough to eventually give me a price. Though. <laughs> okay. And you're like, whoa, that's steep. I think I'll do it myself. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know about you, but uh, Rob, but I've got, you know, if you ever look for a job in programming, you 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 are constantly bombarded with recruiters for the rest of your life. Oh yeah, um, which bet, is normal. Admittedly, normal. that's on a bit of a lull at the moment. I think now I'm back in broadcast. A lot of people like the, there's right. not that many people that are just going around like, oh yeah, you work in oh yeah, you work in broadcast crap. Um, not a lot of hmm. <laughs> not not many that many jobs in broadcast. Yeah, I suppose relatively niche, but. I guess it'd be quite specific headhunt for that one. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but they even like get to your work email by guessing your work email, <laughs> which is really oh god, annoying. really? Yeah, yeah. They'll go on the company website and find that, the, and then they'll find your name, and then they'll try dan dot train at redbadger dot com and hit you. <laughs> mm. It's like they do all kinds of whatever they can think of, or they'll, or they'll be on LinkedIn messaging you all that oh, all the day, yeah. which I never log into. No, um, but but I reached, even I've even that's died down for me. Actually, like maybe maybe working for this company is bad for me. I don't know. <laughs> Love the no, job, no, but no. but no, one, I'm not getting recruiter spam anymore. <laughs> but that now, over the past couple of years or a few years, I've had the other side where they are trying to push you candidates because they think oh, you can hire right. people. So yeah. you get the double because they're like, oh, I've got this guy. He's pretty good at Android. It's like, uh, great, thanks. Not <laughs> so I've got for the, Android the double right whammy. Now. Yeah. 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 Entertaining. I got, I got one. Uh, uh, when was it? Before Christmas, I think. And the guy had taken a picture. He would had a picture taken of himself holding two Starbucks coffee cups, smiling like in a lift. And then he'd photoshopped on his name and my name in a, like a handwriting font. So it, it was meant to look like, and he was like, let's go for a virtual coffee or whatever. Look, I've got a coffee with your name on it. Like, like it had been written there by the Starbucks employee or whatever. And that it's like, wow, doesn't that is sound desperate. <laughs> like a stalker at all. <laughs> no, it's actually horrifying. I'm I mean, gonna, presumably... I'm going to put this photo in my shrine of you. And... <laughs> I mean, he must edit the, you know, and have a different name on the cup for every single, sure. and then blast out like like hundreds of emails. Have I still, already yeah. got a Steve? Yes, I do. Fabulous. <laughs> yeah, it was super creepy. That was quite. It was pretty funny. Hey man, you made the podcast. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> this is a measure of success. I mean, <laughs> we talked think, about it on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, at least I guess they just try anything to stand out and make you that they think that uh, presumably he thinks that like if two and a hundred people laugh at that and actually respond, it'll be worth it. Yeah, probably the kind of metrics they're working with, honestly. Yeah, Didn't, like I imagine that's true of most marketing. In fairness, if you make a percent. Oh yeah, you've done well. You only have to move the needle, right, a little bit. It's like with these YouTube adverts. Like, imagine how many people actually click on that. 
like compared to the number that you reach. You know what? I can't remember the last time I paid attention to a YouTube ad. Like they happen because I tend to watch, I still watch YouTube on my telly, and mm. I can't block ads there. Um, but yeah, I, I just zone out from them completely. Oh no, tell a lie. There was one I can remember because Gnome went oh when it came on because it was a Marks and Spencer food ad. Oh, I I I know one. Oh, what was the Marks and Spencer one? Gone. <laughs> oh, no, that was literally it. It's just, just one of their classic. Well, boom, 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 well, I've, boom, 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 I don't know. I've had recently. I think it's gone away now. But the first one I've ever been looking for, like whether there's a report button or something that I can like say I don't want to see this advert again. Is there a way to do that? I couldn't find one. Obviously, it's I weird to... because sometimes they like the reporting. It's like sometimes the little eye button icon appears where you can like tell it to not show that ad again for like you know real reasons but sometimes there is like an an actual report button as well i used that report button one time recently where there was like an advert that was like flashing and i was like this could totally cause epilepsy yeah yeah, (laughs) that's just real bad you're not allowed to do that well i got something almost as bad which was nigel farage (laughs) yeah yeah and that like i couldn't and it kept coming up and it's like just fuck off. Well, like, that's, literally. If, if, the, if the little eye button is there, one of the options, there's only like three options that you can pick to be like, why do you not want to see this advert? And there's like repetitive, which is like, that's a bit too much catch-all. But then there's yes. also inappropriate, which is just like, that's the other one that you can ah, be like, okay. yeah, that's totally right. <laughs> yeah, I could find that. I mean, if an advert immediately makes you shout, fuck off, <laughs> then it's probably not the right advert I mean, that's, for you. That's one of the things, like, when I, if I'm watch, ever watching YouTube or control Controlling YouTube on my phone, but I hope Google is damn well listening. Yeah, <laughs> listen, listen to my cursing, yo. Yeah, listen to me, because I mean that's, it, the, that's maybe my... that's proof that they aren't listening. That every time Nigel Farage <laughs> yeah, came up, exactly. I shouted "fuck off," and it kept showing me. I mean, the trouble with like, especially with the repetitive option, is like. Yeah, adverts like Grammarly all the time. It's like oh, I've yeah. seen the first five seconds of these adverts a million times over, but I kind of don't want to like delete that for being repetitive because it's just like that advert I can stand, and yeah. if I delete it, it might be <laughs> yeah. replaced by something way worse. It's, yeah, it's perfectly acceptable, <laughs> and now we can say the word Grammarly, and everyone knows what it means. Yep, that ad campaign has totally worked. Are you composing an important email? Well, I did notice there was an ad that had been changed for. I think it was, what was it? I do actually know because of the advert worked, of course. <laughs> it was for Manscaped. All right. But in the original version <laughs> of the advert, it was just like, well, I, I, I'll say what the changed version was. The, cha- the change they made was to make sure they said the name of the brand in the first five seconds. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. They added one of those, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have to make it so it appears before the skip button, right? Yeah, because originally it didn't. But then, then I noticed that they changed it. I was like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I guess you would do that. <laughs> it's a massive anti-climax when it's like a film trailer or something, and they, they, they it goes on there. Because like, they have to do the dun 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 and yeah. it's like, it's this film. So and you're like, well, now I don't want to watch the trailer because you're just like, I'm not excited about it. Cause you're just... The pre-roll trailer advert for yeah. YouTube. Yeah, so annoying. I mean, I know why they do it, but still, it's not, it's not great. And stupid Ponzi scheme reverse psychology ones. If you don't want to make millions, skip this. Yeah. Go ahead and skip this video. <laughs> well, I've never seen those. I mean, that sounds awful. Yeah. They've definitely been turning up more recently. But maybe, like, like it's like, try and think of why that might be. It was probably just from, like, inherited advertising targeting from, like, the whole GameStop thing. Yeah. <laughs> because we've been looking at news and videos yeah. about that. It's just like, oh, now we've got all the... Because <laughs> I keep playing the, the that stupid... Um, uh, Wall Street Bets version of that Wellerman Sea Shanty. <laughs> you know, it's like, soon may the Tendy Man come <laughs> to send our rocket into the sun. <laughs> I miss the days of the ocean finance ads. <laughs> I mean, they were annoying at the time because there were so many of them, but they were all slightly different and they all started with the phrase, it's like, if you got debts that you can't pay or something, they all had that exact right. same wording. It's like, do you have county court judgments against your name? Yeah. <laughs> I know, what was it? Yeah, or like the um, injury lawyers ones. It's like, <laughs> have you had an accident that wasn't your fault? Yeah. My favourite is people that ring me up and say I've been in a, a car accident. It's like, I don't, 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 car, I don't drive. Can't, can't drive, mate. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I I haven't had one of those for a long time because I don't have a landline, and yeah, uh, and actually, my phone does a pretty decent job of flagging spam numbers. Yeah, mine's okay these days. So I never answer one that turns the phone red. It's just like, yeah, mm, no, nope, don't care. If it's important, they will contact me by other means or leave a message. Advertising. Advertising. Much advertising happening in the world of games? In the world of games? No, it doesn't seem to be point. <laughs> well, we haven't had any directs or anything at the moment, so no. <laughs> not news. No, not news. Well, what news do we have? <laughs> Not much. Um, Not this time. Another, another another quiet period, I guess. Uh, Square Enix had a little thing that there wasn't much right. to talk about at because yeah, yeah. As um, Zach met, correctly mentioned before the show, it was like we the uh, bravely default is already out. Thanks with Nintendo mm. and Project Triangle strategy is kind of being shown off at Nintendo y things. Uh, and Final Fantasy VII is being shown off at Sony things. Intergrade. And, yeah, and the other thing was it something Crisis, because they always have to have Crisis in Final Fantasy VII spin off or things. Oh, yeah. Whether that sort of half the remake of. The, yeah, yeah, the sort thing. of other remake. <laughs> like, we remade classic FF7, but probably mobiled it to all hell. Whatever that. Eternal Crisis? Crisis of crises. Yeah, that thing. Anyway, what else have they got left to show? Um, not a huge amount of interest, honestly. There's another Life is Strange coming. Uh, there's got... a remaster yeah. of Life is the first two Life is Strangers is being made. Uh, fair enough, I guess. That don't nods technology doesn't look great. I mean, it didn't look great in fairness when I played Tell Me Why last year. So you know. I'm not sure if the remaster is going to help it all that much. Uh, well, uh, and I guess the, the the big up thing is that Project Athia has a bit of a name now, because that's the, the, the that's kind of Square's mystery project at the moment, really, that we don't know a great deal about. Um, that was shown off at the PS5 events pretty early on, originally. Uh, but yeah, it's now it's now got a name. We can't call it Athia. It's called Forspoken. It takes place in a place called Athia. So, you know, that's where that came from. And it turns out it's absolutely nothing to do with that Unreal Engine 4 tech demo or Luminous Engines tech demo back in the day that everyone sort of suspected this might be related to. It's totally not. It's a different thing. But hey, there's the line, is that a motherfucking dragon in the trailer? So, you know. No, great. <laughs> no, it's a giant Thomas the Tank. <laughs> it's Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a juggernaut, bitch. Uh, that's kind of it, really. I guess yeah, we Lara Croft into everything. <laughs> you want Lara Croft in your Fortnite? I mean that that's one of the ones that makes marginally more sense, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Fortnite's just gonna have everyone in it eventually. It's gonna be the Smash Brothers of Battle Royale. Yeah. I mean, Wait, does, I mean do the char- do the characters stay there? Like, I don't know how that actually works. Do things like like when they do because wasn't Master Chief in Fortnite at one point? I mean, yes, quite recently. Oh, okay, I think he still is, he still is. Okay, so like, but that might be quite recently. Still is not necessarily didn't go away. He still is right. So, can he fight against Batman? Or <laughs> has that does it work? Do those old characters still no, exist? Like, I don't know. I think the only one that must have gone away was Thanos, right? Thanos he was yeah. special for that special mode. Yeah, that was a one-off thing, wasn't it? Can I go punch Drake in the face as so, as, as Laura Croft? <laughs> is Drake in Fortnite the rapper? I mean, was well, it him no, that did that? Drake. Oh no, no <laughs> oh, way! He did. No, I don't think he had a character. Did he? He did that. He did. He did a Fortnite concert. Was that him? 
Someone did a Fortnite concert. I can't remember. Well, it can't beat the Post Malone Pokemon concert. <laughs> Square Enix. Uh, that was it. Uh, in other game announcements, um, I've just had a text reminding me that I need to do that census form, which we haven't done. Yep, that's kind of important. Do your census, please. That's kind of not legal not to do that. <laughs> yep. Don't get fined. Uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, Turtles. <laughs> They've got a game, another game covered. You know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that are so relevant in today's era. It's, uh... Hey, but at least they're trying to make a retro game. This makes total total sense. They want to bring back Turtles in Time, but they tried that a while back by doing a sort of re-release of Turtles in Time. So they thought, well, why why don't we just make a new game like that called Treader's Revenge? And everyone's hype. Because, you know, beat them up as a back, baby, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> Streets of Rage and uh, your current favourite, River City River Girls. City Girls. And last year's Battletoads. Mm. <laughs> and the re release of the uh, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah! Hells yeah. So there you go. There's that. What else is happening? Um. In bad news, the um, the ex Bungie guys, V1 Interactive, I think they were called, who um, developed Disintegration, their one and only game, they are no longer a thing. They have closed. Uh, Disintegration didn't sell nearly as well as it needed to to keep that studio afloat. Hmm. I, I'm not 100%. I guess the idea of a strategy. Shooter just isn't super, isn't mainstream enough, really. Is that the one with the crazy hover bikes? Again, yeah, Destiny style. Absolutely, yeah. It had 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 the hover bikes. It had a very Destiny like feel to its dialogue. Um, yeah, and you had four AI controlled squad people on the ground that you would say, "Go here, go do this." So there'd be a ground fight, and then you could get involved in the fight as well with your hover bike. Right, right. Kind of. Like Titanfall, except much faster <laughs> moving around. I just mean with the mobs and stuff. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I don't really know. But anyway, mm. it didn't. It didn't. Didn't find an audience. So, uh, studio died. I mean, they killed off the multiplayer for that within a few months of it launching because there just wasn't a player base. Shit, but... well, that sucks. For people who worked, who worked on it. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, it's it's tough, isn't it? Because I can't really think of many games like that that do do well. Like maybe the first two battle zones, like I guess, like first person RTSs. Yeah. Nobody really liked Brutal Legends' actual RTS bit, which is the majority of the game. First person RTSs, battle zone. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Tricky. Tricky market. Uh, uh, what else is going on? We've got Sony buys Evo. You know the fighting game tournament. <laughs> so no more Smash Brothers at Evo. Maybe. <laughs> I guess not, though. <laughs> I mean, who knows how, what's going to happen there? I mean, it's a joint. It's a joint venture. Like, it's not just Sony. There's some other esports organization called RTS that are also taking over um uh, but yeah they now own evo and uh why would be the question like why are they doing this it's like maybe to get playstations to be the prime console so maybe the fighting game community will buy playstations that seems like a very roundabout marketing method to get not very many sales <laughs> yeah does seem like a weird route i mean what are the big titles that at Evo, you know that Street Arnold, Fighter, Street Fighter, yeah, Street Fighter, Fighter that's PlayStation. Um, Mortal Kombat's there quite a bit these days, right? But it's not like Soul Calibur and Smash, is it? Uh, I think Soul Calibur Six was there a couple years ago. Um, I'm not sure if it was there for Evo Online last year. 
because Eve Online was quite a cutback thing. But that was why um, one of the old Guilty Gears uh, like surged in popularity, right? Because they they put um, rollback netcode into an old Guilty Gear game, and then suddenly it gained gained huge popularity. Hmm. And I think it turned up at Evo as a result. Uh, yeah. Anyway, just it's just weird. It's just a somewhat inexplicable bit of news. Maybe there's a lot of money in sponsorship for it, and it's just a just another thing that way. Uh, not really news, but rumors. Uh. At the future game show this year, Sega is rumoured to announce two Sonic games. So let's hope it goes 50% better than it did the last time they announced two Sonic games. <laughs> what, that they're both good? Yeah. <laughs> or was that Mania and Forces? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Those, those were the last two Sonic games, and that's quite a while ago now, really. I mean, it's, it's almost worth having a Forces to get a Mania, isn't it, at this point? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'll, I'll let them have that. That's fine. And the, even the forces makes for a stupid video series. <laughs> it's really dumb memes. I know. Wait, where can you where can you watch this video series? On Happy Hi. Salad Net's YouTube channel. Possibly. Oh, how about that? Plug is Happy Salad Net. Type in Sonic Forces, and you can see them all on one page. How's about that? Technology, eh? And I did end up watching like um. The uh, a video on the YouTube channel New Frame Plus, where he went through the animation of every Sonic. Yeah, I watched that as well. It was, was pretty good. It was very disappointing he did do the handheld games though, because I think yeah. he could have had a lot to say about the GBA and then the DS ones. Yeah, I think I think it it would have been more interesting for him to have covered those, but and like the two point five D styles of some of them. Sonic 3D. Classic. <laughs> I mean, that's the that one that kind of thing. fares the worst in, in, many, in some ways, other than, you know, Sonic 4. But, because, uh, it, 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 you know, Sonic 3D was like, they had to use a, like, pre rendered 3D from, and, uh, yeah. and so, you know, 3D animation was in its early days, and it was a bit ropey looking in places. Some of it looks good. Yeah, it was an interesting attempt at, at doing that. I mean, are there any games that even play like that? Like it's like fucking Marble Madness or something. <laughs> yeah, it did feel like Marble Madness sometimes with the physics of it. Mm. Mark Carney wrote Marble Madness, didn't he? <laughs> Cerny, sorry, Cerny, not Carney. Mark Carney's the Bank of England governor. Mark <laughs> Cerny, the Sony guy. Yeah, that is the yeah. Sony guy. He single-handedly wrote Marble <laughs> Madness. And then I'd believe it if you said he single-handedly wrote Knack. <laughs> Probably. But they shut down that studio, so Knack is not back, baby! No! <laughs> the money is not coming. No Knack for that's you. They make a remake. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> a remake? Knack? Knack? No. There's nothing there. Uh, yeah. I, get, I mean, one of the other rumours circling is that it's Sonic Adventure 3. Well, I mean, sure, but like, that's not much of a rumour. <laughs> it's like the most obvious thing you could possibly say. As long as it has a chow garden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the main thing. <laughs> a really, like, complicated chow garden. Yeah. Like, amp, amp it up. Make it hardcore. <laughs> they won't. It's a Sonic game. It'll be the most bare bones yeah. thing imaginable. Yes, it'll be like eight levels and that'll be it. <laughs> I mean, Eggman won't even pick up a chow awkwardly and then go, hoi, hoi, hoi. <laughs> That was the other video I watched on YouTube the other day. It was just like, every time someone says, oh no, in Sonic Adventure. Yeah, I watched that as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no. Oh no. They're all terrible. As it turns out, every single read of oh no every line is bad. Read is bad. <laughs> Uh, more news, or maybe the last, oh no, two more bits of news. Uh, this one just because it's funny and it plugs our Deus Ex series. Um, Warren Spector recently did a talk at GDC where he said Deus Ex is too real for 2021. 
<laughs> I mean, I guess so. And That's here we pretty are. much what we were saying most of the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe it after the first episode when it was like we were talking about how like a bunch of domestic terrorist gun nuts had invaded a US national monument and the, the, the actual government forces were just standing around letting it happen. <laughs> Lol. How interesting. <laughs> Literally with their base right there next yep. to it. In the middle of a global pandemic. <laughs> too real, man. It's too real. It's too real. And gonna, is that talk on YouTube? <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. Sometimes GDC talks on yeah. YouTube, but not always. Then finally... The good Clone Wars cartoon is coming to Disney Plus. Yeah, the completely non canon <laughs> awesome Clone Wars cartoon. Yeah. The problem with that is you need to watch it in fifteen ten minute bursts, which is the length of the episodes, because like it's just nothing but action scenes <laughs> and there's there's no let up at all. So if you try to watch that for like three episodes in a row, you're gonna blow your brains out. That's fine. I've watched Crank. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much like that. I can handle it. In fact, we did handle it because that was how we watched it in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I think was, I had the DVD of it was, Tartarovsky's uh, Clone War. It was badass. It was super badass. Primarily, primarily for that Mace Windu episode. Come on. That is that is so stupid, yeah. but so awesome. That was cool. I don't know. A lot of it was cool. Um, I mean, the second series of it, you know, has more. It's more, more of a story. Isn't more it? of a story, yeah, yeah but... Um, so that has good and bad points, <laughs> I would say, because you get Anakin being more whiny in that one. Uh, but it has—it's really cool. The last sequence, which leads, which was, it's a tie-in for Revenge of the Sith. Um, you know, and it has an awesome sequence of of like rescuing the Chancellor or whatever from his office and getting him onto the, you know, for General Grievous is after him or whatever, and then at the start of episode three he's already captured on the ship right mm. but there's a whole awesome sequence uh uh with with jedi trying to defend him or whatever and that was really cool and then immediately uh he, he, grievous goes from being in the animated show like super badass to being like this just pathetic coughing wheezing yeah <laughs> stooped over robot dude <laughs> in the actual film i'm sure we've talked about this before but why does he cough uh he gets his thing force cr his doesn't he Torso. get his chest force yeah. crushed by by who Mace Windu or Yoda or someone big someone important? But he's a robot. Yeah, but, but he he's, has all those organic bits in him. That's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> he's half robot. That's the bit that gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uncivilized. Oh, yeah. And that's news. That's all I got. Ti tiny bit of extra news from my Steam news feed that I was slightly in intrigued by. But for Eve, they're currently in beta of experimenting with a web based Eve client. Whoa. <laughs> oh, yes. What, no, like WebGL. No, well, no. I, I, I think it's like cloud streaming. Yeah, it oh, seems okay. to say it's cloud streaming, but it's not like. It's their own thing. It's not like it's coming through one of the regular services, by the sound. I mean, it. you probably don't want to tie yourself to Stadia. Well, no. <laughs> but the UI is going to be all grimy if you're trying to put that through video, isn't it? I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, they claim it's going to be 1080p and everything. Mm. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I always hang quite well, right? Because a lot of that UI would stay static. Um, yeah, mostly. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've yeah, always, always thought, like, surely the obvious. The obvious trick to making Eve unnecessarily accessible is just make a version of it that's only UI, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because then you could just log in and do all like the markets and all that right. stuff. You wouldn't even need to undock. <laughs> I, I thought people had a way of doing that, didn't they? Didn't they? Or they like, turned all their graphic settings down or something? Sure, I mean to... you can do that, yeah. but... but to make just like a what would basically just be a phone app that just lets you access the UI of Eve, but not any of the actual game. <laughs> I'm sure people would use that. <laughs> play it sitting on the sofa while they're watching the news or whatever. But, you know, 
in, I, I was slightly more intrigued at the possibility of it just being an actual web client, like not not video streaming. Because they did that thing a while ago, like quite a while ago, where they put that where they made a ship renderer so you could look at the ships in a web browser. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty cool and ran really well, especially considering that was like several years ago at this point. Yeah. Well, WebGL is pretty advanced and you've got like WebAssembly now, so you can pretty much like run, you can run Unreal in there because it's, <laughs> right, <laughs> whatever. In a browser and, you, and you know, Eve is definitely a game that you could get away with that kind of yeah. limited capacity because it, because of it being like there's a lot of nothing <laughs> most of the time. There's not that many polygons, technically speaking. But I can't even test that because it's US only at the moment. Mm. Well, if we are sponsored by a VPN, I'm sure here's where the ad would come in. Yep. <laughs> There's a lot of those, isn't there, on YouTube? Bloody tons of those. Naturally. Is that news? Right. That's yep, the news. news. It is time for what you've been playing. Um, who's going to go first? Rob, are you going first this time? I could. I've not got a very eventful week, honestly. Like a couple of weeks. So um, not a huge amount to talk to. Just expansions on last time. Um, uh, I, so I think I've finished the main story of Control. I mean, I've had two credit sequences, so I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so you hope that you'd be down after yeah. two. Well... <laughs> Mild spoilers. The first one is one of those fake out credit sequences. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it kind of does a thing, and then it's like, wait, hang on, this isn't right. You start to notice things about it, and then it gets very obvious that it's not not a real sequence. Um, uh, yeah. That, hmm. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about it how, having finished it. It's one of those where it's like I don't think feel like it really came to a climax particularly, if you know what I mean. It just sort of I never really felt like I was really achieving the stakes of the game particularly. Like mm. there, you're, there definitely becomes a MacGuffin that you have to stop, but that wasn't that hard as it turned out to do, and there wasn't like a bespoke boss to do that, and it wasn't all that. I mean, the game's story is all kind of told in its world, and there is a you know a couple of cool sequences towards the end, but they're not really they don't really feel climactic in service of the story. Like it just sort of happens, and then you're like a little bit like, and then it just ends, and you or you 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 do the thing with the MacGuffin, and it's just like it's over, sort of. And it's just, but nothing's really been explained, or nothing's really been. I don't feel I don't feel a decent sense of closure, if you see what I mean okay. from it. You don't get any of that. You just get a whole load of questions. What's the deal with a janitor? That's like the most important thing in like a whole thing. Like, what's the deal with the the Finnish janitor who speaks like nonsense the entire time and has mysteriously has a tape that plays heavy metal music that will guide you through the ashtray maze? Um That's a cool sequence, by the way. <laughs> the ashtray maze. The ashtray maze. The ashtray is one of their weird objects of power, and it basically makes a maze that like has walls that open and close, and will always lead you back to the start, like unless you know the way through or some sort of trick to it. And the janitor's trick that he listens to, he has a Walkman that plays music, and for some reason, when you're listening to that Walkman, the way it just takes you the right way. Right, so it's the Lost Woods. <laughs> yeah, I don't really understand it, but it's it's not like you're following the music. You like the maze oh, right, just okay. just expands the right way because you have this Walkman on. But while you're listening to the the Walkman's playing like an old heavy metal band, supposedly, in this world that like you're singing a song about taking control. <laughs> but it's kind of a fun sequence. It's weird because it's like it's a fun sequence mainly because you're not really doing anything in particularly interesting. You're just having fights and traversing an environment again. But the music is weirdly uplifting because it's the one sequence in the game where that happens and the rest of the music is so ambient throughout the rest of it or as like mm. strange arrhythmic drums um so then you get this this bit and it's like you know it's like yeah this is cool this is, I'm, 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 for some reason this lifts the whole thing i'm having I'm having a great time and at the end of it even even your character just comes away and goes that was awesome and you're like <laughs> yeah all right fair play yeah. game i'll, I'll agree with you there <laughs> 
uh, I kind of wish it had more stuff like that, like like more sort of moments. I suppose there's plenty of weird stuff in that game, and but but um, I, I wish the core story had more more of that sort of construction. Uh, there's, I mean, one of the coolest boss fights I've had in that game, which seems to be a bespoke thing, like a weird thing that you can just optionally do was exactly that it's optional it's like it's not a thing you have to do and that was one of the strangest like more interesting fights uh and then now i finished the game that's basically what the game is telling me to do there's like there's stuff you haven't done there's probably plenty of secrets and side missions you haven't done yet and it's go, go do those or try and find out what they are and it's like um i mean they could be interesting 50 percent of the side stuff is very interesting but the other 50 percent of it is god god awful <laughs> well, not, not really god awful that's a bit harsh but just annoying like one of the i found one like like so i carried on a little bit after finishing it and was just like right okay let's there's, there's, there's an area nearby that i haven't been in let's go there went in there and not only was it was it uh, was it classed as a boss fight when it's basically a normal enemy that's just quite a lot with a quite a lot more health than normal and its attacks do take off half your health in a single hit which is quite annoying yeah but it's then some of the problems I raised last time are, you know, compound that whole fight and that it's the enemy, it starts spawning in other enemies, which is kind of a necessity in that game because obviously that's the only way you can regain health is right, by right. killing other things and then scooting over there and picking up the weird blue dots that they drop. Um, so you kind of have, if, <clears throat> if you're in trouble, you kind of need to go kill minions basically. Um, but the ones it drops in in this particular fight, which is already annoying enough because it's quite an open space, not a lot of cover, and you're very easily killed. Um, yeah, it drops in the enemies that will just swarm you and explode on your face. Like all of the types of them. Mm. There's that, that, that there's that super annoying one I described last time, which is invisible most of the time, and then just appears next to you and blasts you with, again, an attack that does half your dam- half your health if you're not careful so that whole thing just becomes a bit of a crapshoot so you're trying to deal with the minions you're trying to deal with this teleporty well not really teleporting but this invisible thing whilst also trying to dodge projectiles from something that is flying high above you and it just becomes impossible to see and it's like it feels like luck as to like oh the the sequence of events just happened that i could see where everything was and i could deal with it that seems to be the trick about control it's like it's being able to see what's happening right because there's so much fog and stuff like weird yeah or or you know things can just come at because of the various enemy designs things can literally come at you from any angle at times Mm. and it's just like well i can't really see what's behind me while i'm fighting this thing here that i need to deal with right now and it's the trick to control is managing that but it's almost unmanageable so i don't i don't know how much i don't know if i'll go back to it again Honestly, mm. like I think I like its setting. I think more than I like anything else. I mean, it's cool. Like the whole, the, the yeah, the whole environment and the whole backstory and all of their world building stuff. Remedy is classically good at is great. Yep. There's some Alan Wake references in there as well. You know, just to tie, <laughs> tie the worlds nice. together. Oh, they, is it the same universe? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Apparently. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. It's 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 good. I just kind of came away wishing it was a bit better which then led to a more sort of existential not existential but you know sort of deeper thought process about triple a games in general and that it's yeah. like i definitely see where the money went mm. but in the same breath it's like does this make this a better game than river city girls you know <laughs> yeah no no yeah it's interesting i mean we've definitely at a strange point with because the budgets of those games have to be so huge in order to to, to get enough art done and mm. you know to make it look good in 4k or whatever that now like you kind of have to focus group the the the, the artistic idea to in order to green light some a project that big so they end up getting kind of watered down and you 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 have to have a, like a, a crazy track record like you know rockstar or naughty dog or whatever to to be able to do whatever you want yeah to command those sort of budgets and take that amount of time and And so remedy will uh smaller uh they have a good track record it's a bit patchy but but they'll have secured that funding from sure you know they'll probably have to 
so it, I think it suffers sometimes a little bit. Yeah, I forget who published this. Um, I forget. Um, might be an Activision or something like that. Um, but yeah, you can easily end up with a game that's good, but not as good as an indie game like River City Girls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's clear. You know, you could you could argue that it's like it's kind of obvious that there's like okay, perhaps it wasn't dealing with those massive massive budgets. You know, everything takes place inside the bureau, which has a look. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like the entire thing has that officey vibe. Um, well, with a couple of uh, different areas, but there's not there's not a huge amount going on in terms of variety compared to some big hitters, right? Not like Gears, I guess, or you know, if you want to talk about or Uncharted or those sorts of games, it's like you're not yeah. getting that variety. No, you know, so you can you can argue you can see where it's scaled back. Um, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily. Thing. That's not necessarily a detriment. You can use it to your advantage, and I think they exactly. Yeah. I think they do do a decent job with what they had here. But there's, there's just a little bit of the whole, like, oh boy, you, you know, if you're pay, having to pay for this again to get the what is it, the full Magic Edition, whatever it is, on on next gen consoles, Ultimate Edition, I think it's just called. Um, I don't know. That seems like a lot of money for that. Right for that experience feels like a lot of money. Well, I think in general, like the it's going to settle down with these these games that are struggling this generation because like mm. it's, you you basically just need a it needs to be a free patch <laughs> pretty much or like a total yeah overhaul I think to that's make just, it worth it because that I think this whole thing new... is just me growing up to some extent and sort of being yeah being a, like you know like, I, I've always been a bit of a cheap ass gamer in some ways but like um. Not to quote cheapassgamer.com or whatever <laughs> decent website. Um, they, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's something about the whole, you know, buying a game for sixty quid now or fifty odd, fifty five or whatever it ends up being here just seems preposterous most of the time. Because um, I kind of know I'm not going to have as much fun with it as I might expect. It, whereas that didn't. I'm not sure that used to be true. Yeah, right, I mean, there used to be more cert- certified hitters or you'd 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 spend that money on a game and be all like yeah more often yeah you have to really i mean you have to be pretty confident you're gonna have a good time with it before you spend that now don't you Mm. i don't know yeah i find it find it tough that's why control is in a difficult area it is in a difficult spot yeah yeah there was an interesting article on it you talk about the whole um well, accidentally touched on the whole like generational jump thing. Yeah, there. there was an interesting article on Kotaku about how that's such a pain in the ass for some games on PS4 because actually, as it turns out, smart delivery is magic. Like there, it, it's not really te- like it, it doesn't sound like even from a technical perspective. If I look at it and think like, oh, it, it can't be that much of a thing, right? You just make a version of the game for each platform and have it so the console delivers mm. that version to that platform, right? Mm. but then like as playstation owners have started to figure out there are some games where you have to have the ps4 version installed so it syncs your ps4 save to that console and And then then you have to go download the ps5 version of the game as well into the same hard disk onto the same hard disk and then the ps5 version of the game has to have a migration option i think it was avengers or something like which probably isn't the best Like yeah. example, in fairness, yeah, and then you have to pull it, pull, you know, migrate your save from the PS4 version to the PS5 version because they're not considered the same thing, but that game is aware of it somehow. It's like a tagging problem, really. It's like a metadata problem. I'm sure you could smooth it over for some games, first party titles and stuff, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be seamless, that's for sure. I'm not sure Sony cares about that, though, right? They'll just put out a new version of the game if they want to do yeah. that. The weirdest part about this new generation, I suppose, did it? I don't know. If, presumably, it happened last time. I don't remember. But it's not just the fact that you know the games take so long to develop, and therefore you have to have uh, you know, and the architecture is the same. Therefore, you have to have these patched versions to give a library to the new console and all of that stuff. Um, but the fact that no one has the new console because you can't buy them—that's the weirdest mm. part. Uh, I mean, there's one in my flat now because Gary managed to get one, but a PS5, and you've got a Series X, but mm-hmm. like a lot of people <laughs> really can't get them, so it's like pretty weird. No, of... the supply issue on PS5s in particular is 
is bad at up. the moment. It's, yeah, it's a long time since launch, and you literally cannot buy them. Yeah, to the point where I still see tweets every now and then being "They're back in stock, people." Yeah, I guess it's due, probably due to COVID, but even so, um, yeah, it's, it can't be helped, I guess, by by that. But it's pretty crazy, though. Um, but I suppose. <laughs> It's all about what patches for what games because, like, there aren't, there just aren't quite enough. Um, the you know, new generation games to fully make it worth it necessarily. No, this is true. And there aren't, I mean, there are, you know, more and more games are getting their XS upgrades. From, That's what I mean. But there's not, it's all about the patches. Yeah. Like, if when the, it will actually, I imagine it will actually make a difference to the PS5, uh, you know, when The Last of Us Part 2 gets its patch or whatever. Right, so, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, God of War already had its yeah God patch, of War. but those are slightly different because they're not, they're not, yeah, they're weird cases because they're not like full. Yeah, it's strange. There's some difference on PlayStation where it means like, like if you, you're you are still playing the PlayStation Four version of those games half the most of the time, yeah. they yeah. just have some awareness that they're running on, yeah, PS Five and can do a little bit more without needing a whole new set of assets or whatever whereas if you want to go full on and be like oh no we're adding ray tracing to this or whatever it's like no 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 can't do that you can't have no but are they doing that on xbox games adding like full on ray tracing and shit to, well the, to, like... that will be how cyberpunk works when it eventually oh that makes sense for cyber cyberpunk's the weird 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 one <laughs> i mean it's the weirdest but yeah, yeah when it get when it gets its xs patch it will um yeah, it'll add things like ray tracing is the is is the theory. We don't really know. They're still what about keeping Forza quite quiet about Horizon that. Three or whatever. Is that going to get like a, a big boost? Because it probably could, right? There's I mean, three times. probably could because that came out on PC, so it probably has yeah. that capability. But I don't think they have. They they, they seem like they've right. been relatively reluctant to go back to games that are too old. Yeah, and do stuff like that because obviously Gears Five got an XS patch. Um, so you could download the 4K content and stuff like that and make it um, run with all that stuff. Um, I feel like Forza Horizon 3 would look epic, though. You've already, I mean, you've seen that on your PC, so... Yeah, I mean, it would look pretty good. The, 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 the thing I like struggle to get over is like, in the same way I struggle to get, get over with Rocket League, which I played some on uh, mm -hmm. my Xbox, because you know, that's got an XS patch now. Um. And it's like, yeah, the HDR is nice, but boy, do I miss my 165 right. frame, hertz frame rate in that yeah. game. I don't know why, like dropping it all the way down to 60 because my TV just can't handle 120 unless I dick around a bit too much. It can do it, but I've never tried it. Um, yeah, that makes too much of a difference for me playing that. Also, I managed to crunch another controller. <laughs> so, you know, me playing Rocket League on an X-Bone controller, bad times. Crunchy. Yeah. Crun crunchy stick. I noticed because I then tried to use that same controller to play Segway, Dirt 5. Dirt 5. And the, I think the little clip that I broke off that, that breaks off the left stick it had managed to lodge itself underneath the right trigger. Like it had just floated its way over there, like freely inside the case and had, inside, like, yeah. and had wedged itself under the right trigger because I, I I was pushing the right trigger down and I was not getting full acceleration. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, I'm like, why am I traveling at 40? <laughs> it's not a trip to the shops. <laughs> no. So, Dirt 5. I'm, you know, I've stuck with it, I'm still playing it. I think it got more interesting compared to the brief time I had with it last time because mm -hmm. I started getting into better vehicle classes or more fun vehicle classes. Like there aren't so many of the SUV races coming up at the part of the game are in, I'm in, and it's more, hey, do you want to race '90s rally cars? And I'm like, hell is yeah, I do. I want that Lancer and I want that Impreza. It's like when the game's like, well, there you go then. And oh, I'm like, sweet. well, these are way better. These, the, the some. It brings back some of the fun factor to the driving model because they're just a hell of a lot faster, hmm. uh, and it really lifts it lifts the driving experience quite well. Um, uh, generally, um, I'm, I still find myself quite impressed with how that game handles like its weather, its changing weather conditions over the course of a race, and its changing lighting conditions over a race. It is it's it's pretty impressive at times. Like, there are hmm. some quite 
crazy ass races where it's like your biggest problem isn't necessarily the driving it's the visibility because the snow is so thick and things like that and th- those are actually relative pretty interesting challenges and they look pretty great like it has to, yeah it, 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 I, I gotta admit it's like it has its moments where the lighting can look very flat and all the grass and dirt can kind of look the same color so it doesn't really stand out or pop all that much but uh it's, it's, but most of the time the, the game walks a fairly realistic line, and it can pop if it wants to, <laughs> when the bonkers occasions turn up, and it's um, and it's cool. Like one of my one, one of the best looking races so far in the game was like a one of the icebreaker races, which is you know like ice racing from like Rally Sport Challenge. Ah, oh, classic. Um, and but it was in the middle of a snowstorm, and at night. But the way they design, like these ice tracks are laid out, like all the barriers are basically got neon lights on them, and all the mm. cor- all the corners have got things. Some of the ice tracks have lights under the ice, <laughs> sweet, <laughs> which looks bonkers cool. Um, and then for some, because they like amp everything up in these games, there's like fireworks going off at the end, like somewhere in the distance, and like the, there's pyrotechnics along the side of the track in places, or there's just confetti bombs going off in places. And it's just like this. This this race in particular it was quite a tough race. So I was doing it quite a bit. Oh, and there's a lightning storm going on as well, whilst it's snowing. Uh, it's like, of course, naturally, it's just nuts. But it looks cool. <laughs> 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 and, and and the spectacle of, of of stuff like that is pretty awesome. And I, it's, it's great. It's, it's this is what the, that studio is good at, right? Like, like they, I guess they've proven that they over the last few games they've made. It's like if they want to do spectacle, they can do it. Like you know, uh, on Rush obviously had had its own style, but and but it had the whole changing weather. It had the changing light, and it was that's true. Um, yeah. And they made Motorspawn, Storm, Motorspawn, Motorstorm all those years ago, which was almost all spectacle. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah. Um. So they know they know what they're doing on that front. Uh, where it all, I mean, but it does. It's, I still, I still think that game has huge problems. I mean, the, like the, the biggest one for me is how the AI drives. It's like it's like the worst kind of AI for this game, really. And it, like, it explains possibly why it's got such a rudimentary collision model that I mentioned last time. Mm. Um, because I don't think the AI drives to the same driving model you're driving to. Oh, okay. Like they seem to be able to. They don't really drift all that much. Um, on normal rally races or things like that and drifting is like super easy for you to do as a player um and if you try and follow their lines as meticulously as you can trying to speed match them and trying to think that trying to drive as they do you'll find yourself sliding all over the place while they seem to be able to carve a perfectly straight drift free line across a completely sodden dirt track in china (laughs) it's uh it's it seems odd and off, and it often means you're driving a different line to the AI, which then creates the other problem, which is collisions are bound to happen if if both of you are driving different lines, different lines or or yeah. are forced to drive different lines because the, the mechanics work that way. And maybe I'm just reading into this wrong, because but but I toyed with no, it a little bit. Like I tried to like because I've been playing it on the hardest difficulty level with the as much of the assists turned off as possible. Um, just to make it a bit more interesting, because it's not, it, it only poses a challenge every now and then, even on that setting. Um, and yeah, I still couldn't do it, even with all the assists turned on or anything. It's not like it's those that the, the AI decides to use. Right, that they have those turned on. Yeah, I still could just found it impossible to try and mimic their their driving style. Um, so yeah, it means there are corners they can just take better than you. There are. Um, and there are bits that you can take better than them. And so you end up with this weird juggling sometimes between positions, but as you're trying to weave your way through them, but yeah, they don't try and avoid you and you don't really try and avoid them <laughs> well, cause you can't necessarily because everyone's driving. Yeah. It's just weird. Like it, it brings the whole experience down cause you don't like, it's one of those things where it's like, it, it, it it's, it's walking that line between arcade and, sim and doesn't land either well or well enough i don't think like i could probably forgive it if it it drove a bit more fun and the ai was just was dumb and it was but it was it was built more like an arcade racer 
like Ridge Race or Daytona or something like that. Just make it fun, but in a different way. Because these are just straight ass races. Something just doesn't quite hang together. It doesn't even hang together in a Sega Rally sort of way. Hmm. And I find that a real bummer because I kind of I respect this studio a lot. Um, I think they were formerly Evolution. I think that's just what they were called. But yeah, so I, re- I respect them quite a bit for what they try to do. And it feels like such a. I wonder if they were disappointed when they were given dirt as their. Right. As this yeah. is the, after Codemasters picked them up. It's like, is this this is what you're doing? And they're like, oh, that's a little bit dull for us. <laughs> mm. And it's like, I would have much preferred them to have gone away and made something mad. Well, maybe they will next time. I don't know. I suppose they've they've got the name recognition for dirt. Yeah. But but they don't have to keep doing dirt. You know, they could do something different. Exactly. I don't. I don't I feel mean, they, like they the passion show... was there this time. That you know that they they, they've shown different... in their other projects. Like, what? Well, there was another dirt that tried to be more like Destruction Derby, wasn't there? Or like a stupid one? Yeah, it was when they. Called? Yeah, Dirt Showdown. You're right. It's because it's when they. It's when they first split out Dirt Rally. Hmm. Um, so they could. There's room under the dirt name for the for a crazy dirt, isn't there? Well, this is kind of that though. Now is the thing, yeah, like guess. like like the regular dirt series because it's kind of done away with rally for real. Yeah. Um, it's not really a. Yeah, because yeah, dirt rally is now a separate thing, and there's no rally in this. Like it's yeah, it's kind of it is a showdown now. There's no destruction derby, but it's yeah. But it's kind of that. It's weird to think, like, you go back to, like, all the way to Dirt 3. Yeah. Like, I think its destruction model was, like, better. <laughs> or at least more, dram- <laughs> than now. At least more dramatic yeah. than what it is now. And, th- and that's also weird to think, because that's kind of what the first MotorStorm game was sold on, was its crashes. And the physics behind it all. Ah, it's It's weird. But it's nice as a sort of like I can just pick this up and play a couple races kind of thing. I don't know what else to do with my time, so let's drive some cars kind of <laughs> kind of game. It's all right. I'd have been bummed if I paid full price for it at launch. Let's put it that way. Right. <laughs> game pass. Game pass. Beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, what else we got? Um, I finished. River City Girls for the second time. <laughs> Round two. Yep, doing the um, secret boss this time, which um, was a cool, difficult boss fight. That was, you know, the, I got nothing against the actual fight itself, and it even has a weird setup to that doesn't really explain its existence, but kind of acknowledges that it's weird that there's a secret boss, sort of self-aware kind of kind of gag. Um, and then doesn't, and then didn't do enough cool with it. Really, was my problem with it. It's like it's like, oh, you, you've oh, there's old alternate fight, and then you don't really do the alternate ending that should probably go with it. It just does the regular ending. So that was a bit of a shame. It's like it's like some missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. Yeah. yeah. And then I went. So then I tried. I considered perhaps having a third playthrough as one of the spoiler alert. One of the other unlockable characters you get. Um. And uh, yeah, that that didn't feel different enough. Now it's like now I've done it twice. It's like doing it again, and I did it the second time on hard mode, new game plus. And it's just like doing, trying to do it again. It was like oh, no, you don't fight different enough to be interesting, and you the story unfortunately doesn't change to match who I'm playing with. So it, all, it seems it still voices over as if the original two characters are there, even though the character you're playing as is neither of them. Um, and it's like, there, yeah, damn, they didn't, they didn't quite go whole hog. That would have been cool. <coughs> um, excuse me. Uh, but yeah, still really like that game. That was cool. Enjoyed that. And that might be it. I'm struggling. I think. What else I've really done? Don't think I've played anything new. A lot of house stuff, really. Because you know. Packing is a bastard. Indeed. House, house, da da da, house. It is fun looking through like some of the old stuff you find, though, sometimes. 
yeah, that's kind of cool stuff you've had in story trades. And it's like, oh yeah, I've got one of these. <laughs> ah, this is my bizarre box of Game Boys. I lost my Game Boy because my <laughs> because my no, I had it stored at my mum's, whatever. And she, as soon as she knew I was getting a new place, she immediately started taking stuff out of storage and categorizing it <laughs> so that you know. Uh, and we had all the games out and stuff, and I was like, no, keep those because like. Even if I can't store them, they might maybe Rob will want our game. No, game. I will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but unfortunately, she had someone. <laughs> she had someone replacing her boy there who saw my Game Boy and wanted it. And I was uh, like, and she was like, "Can I give it to him?" I was like, "Yeah, well, fine." <laughs> At the time, uh, are we yeah. talking like OG Game Boy as well? Game Boy Color. Green. Oh wow! Well, yeah, I'm, I'm actually yeah. missing a GBC. I don't have a. Yeah, that's a shame. I don't have one of those in the in the pile. So that one has gone. I've got, I've, uh, do you want to guess how many original Game Boys I actually have? Uh, original Game Boys? Original originals, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I never had one. Uh, no. <laughs> Not even a guess. <laughs> Not going to guess. Zach, you can place a bet. <laughs> I'm not sure I, if I remember how many you had <laughs> in that box. Oh, you've it seen the box, have you? Oh, okay, that's a clue, I suppose. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking about GBAs, not that box. Well, no, that's that's because that's like all of our GBAs. I, actually, yeah. I don't think you have my one. I, well, I, I kept my one in my bag. Oh, maybe, yeah. I've got at least three of them. <laughs> three GBAs. Original Game Boys. No, no, no oh, three, three GBAs. I actually top that mark on, on regular Game Boys. I've got four. Whoa. I wouldn't got... mind a regular Game Boy. They, they are cool. Yeah. How many copies of Tetris have you got? <laughs> don't, know, don't know, actually. The games weren't in that same they... box. They're elsewhere. <laughs> um, I mean, what's the point of an original Game Boy without a copy of Tetris? <laughs> I have got a copy of Tetris somewhere. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, I've ended up with a, an, an original grey, a black one, which is kind of cool. Oh, I didn't know uh, they did different colours. A, another original grey one, but this one has suffered badly from old school plastic yellowing. Right. So it's another flavour. And also my personal favourite, uh, which was donated by someone years ago who moved to another country and was like, you might want these. And I'm like, yeah, I want these. Um, was a a Japanese clear plastic one. Ooh. Oh, and it's and it's oh, it's properly oh, cool looking. It's a is nice. It, is it crystal thing. clear? Is it like it's crisp? T- no, no, it's, it's not, not even. It's not t- even frosted or tinted. It is just clear as glass, and it is nice. It's, it's a go- I'm, I'm never using that thing. It's too gorgeous. <laughs> awesome. But what can you see? Is the circuit board green inside? Or yeah, yeah, classic, classic green. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. So I got got yeah. four, four proper old Game Boys, and and a Game David's Boy got Pocket. One of those. I don't know if yeah. that counts. Has anyone got oh Game Boy Pocket? That was the intermediate one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just was before Color came out, it was, it was uh, silver. I think the one I've got silvery one. The one that I like and I think David has is that like tiny Game Boy Advance. You know, oh the micro. Yeah, I've got yeah. one of those. You've got one. Yeah, I've got oh, one of those. I haven't got a charger for it though. Is it as oh, a, okay? As, as I found out, I like a like I've got the micro, but for some reason the charger's gone missing. The micro is so cool. Oh, it's impossible to use though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's an awesome little device, but it's like it's just no. That thing is hand cramp central. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think unless you're playing like a, a Mario game that doesn't use the bumpers, maybe if you're playing like Mario DX or something, you might be all right. Wasn't there a version of it for like which had Super Mario Brothers and was like coloured like a NES or something? I don't. Know. Oh, like what the Famicom. micros? Oh, I don't know. Like Famicom. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Special edition. Anyway. They definitely did DSs like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway, that was fun. I've got more of that to go through at some point. Dreamcasts are still to come. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Well, actually, I don't know if they're all here. There was a point in time where I had three. T- two of them didn't work. <laughs> well, because the, the hard the the disc drives on Dreamcasts are bad. Um, yeah, the PlayStation One's up there, the N sixty four's up there. Oh, that was the other thing I found in this box: a game park. 
I don't know what that is. No, I can't really remember what it was either. It's like, but I have one, apparently. Must have been a donation from someone. Um, yeah, I need to go actually look up what the hell that thing is. It feels bad. <laughs> like the 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 D pad or the control stick is weird because it's like it's a it's like an analog stick, but when it hits a direction, there's clearly a micro switch in there that clicks. Hmm. So it's not analog at all. <laughs> it's a yeah bizarre thing. Oh, and a Turbo Graphic sixteen portable. Of which I think I only got one game for. <laughs> and that's let alone the Game Gear box and the Nomad that's somewhere. Oh, blimey. None of us have any Neo Geos, do we? No, never had a Neo, never owned a Neo Geo, not even the Neo Geo Pocket. Mm. Never owned any, well, no, the, the real Neo Geos, the Geos are always expensive. Mm. And they're, they're crazy money now. None of us had a Jaguar. <laughs> Jaguar. Like I don't have. Um, yeah, that that is definitely a console I have had no desire to own. Even as it, from the collector's point of view, it's like no, I don't want one of those. But your parents still got their Amstrad emailer. <laughs> you know what? I don't know. That's probably a collector's. I, I think that might actually still be plugged in. <laughs> And then, like, that's what they use as a phone. Wow. <laughs> I wonder if you can send email with it. Oh, I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if there's, like, there must be services available out there where you can still probably hook up some sort of ancient POP3 interface to it or something. Yeah. And then maybe it would still work. It would be as insecure as hell. But it might not work actually now because it might not have the certificate certificate support no. for modern HTTPS, or maybe it only worked with like SSL three or whatever, and so TLS and all that stuff probably wasn't invented, mm. so it probably wouldn't work unless you made it totally insecure. Or maybe you could proxy it to a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or something. And have <laughs> yeah, that that's be true. Secure. You could probably do that. Filth. But then, in order to do that, you'd have to turn on those protocols on your Pi. That's and true. I, and I don't know if you can make that less secure. Yeah. <laughs> right in if you've tried. Or one of you that may have an Amstrad emailer. <laughs> right. Is that your games that you have played? I am done. It's time for Zachary Burgess's games, what he has played over the past two-week period. Yeah, fortunately, there hasn't been many. <laughs> In fact, there's been... Well, I mean, there's technically been more, but only two that we need to talk about. <laughs> um, so I finished Stardew. That was the first thing. And I mean, like, I actually finished... I finished all the achievements and I finished the in-game like completion as well, <laughs> which was kind of weird. Well, like, so the achievements that I mentioned last time, how I was slightly annoyed by how difficult they were, particularly the one for beating the in-game arcade game without dying. <laughs> Luckily, it turns out that there's some convenient cheese for that, or like, well. It's not like super convenient cheese, it's like semi convenient cheese. And then there's like, <laughs> there's like two levels of cheese, like legitimate cheese and, and actual cheese. There's hard cheese, semi hard cheese. I want, I want a semi convenient, <laughs> illegitimate cheese, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but basically, like, you still have to play the whole game without dying. But when you get to the last boss, there's two different ways to cheese your way through that um specifically well the the legitimate cheese way is that because it's like a quite an old school style game the enemy doesn't shoot in eight directions like you do it has like slightly more directions it can shoot in but if you like one of its attack patterns it just stands still and shoots directly at you 
but if you like strafe very slightly out of line a bit, because your sprite is smaller than its sprite, you can stand in a position where its bullets go past you, but your bullets hit it. Oh, nice. So you can just basically stand still <laughs> and just shoot it. But that's only during one of its attack patterns. But then the much less legitimate cheese of it is that because it's a game inside a game, you can quit at any time and it saves your progress. And normally it checkpoints every time you die, but in the last boss fight, it only checkpoints at the start of the boss fight. So if you die in that boss fight, you just quit and restart and it forgets. <laughs> which makes getting the achievement for not dying much easier because mm. getting through the whole game without dying isn't nearly as difficult as getting through that boss fight without dying. Right, yeah. So I managed that. And then I got the achievement for earning 10 million, but then the trouble with that is the, like for the in-game completion, like the final 100% or whatever, you have to get the golden clock and that costs 10 million. So even though I'd earned 10 million, I only had had like 4 million of that actually in my account because I've spent all that money up to that point. So I was like, when I got the achievement for 10 million, I still had to earn like another 6 million to actually buy the thing that costs 10 million. (laughs) But I got through that. Just grind that out. Just start optimizing, but not fully optimizing. Because there's a lot of ways you could optimize that game where it's just like, this is real like gamey <laughs> so you're right. not really running a legitimate farm any longer it's gone the real like hardcore video min-max, game you're just yeah yeah totally min maxing this i mean you do sort of naturally min max this anyway where it's just like especially when a few patches ago they introduced the shed building where it's just like you know it's a bit of a tardis where it's much bigger on the inside so you're basically building sheds just to have more space to put like kegs for brewing <laughs> <laughs> Because you can fit way more kegs in this tiny space. Excellent. I need one. Although, of those. although if you're going full min maxing, you start putting kegs like everywhere you can actually put anything, like just ra- like randomly around town and stuff, <laughs> <laughs> or in the quarry, or like at the bus stop where there's just like there's space you can build stuff here. Just build, just fill it with more kegs. <laughs> why? Why would? Why is there space to build? Randomly. Yeah, I don't know why you're even allowed to build in some of these. Cause like, uh, there's a certain places where you're, where it sort of makes sense. Like, well, I guess kind of makes sense. But like the desert, if you go over there, you can plant more trees and stuff. Even though that doesn't really make sense for the desert, but it's like you can use it to like, you know, make a tree farm or whatever in this big open space or the island, of course. Now where you can just do whatever you want there, but it's just like. I'm not sure why they allow you to do that in places like the bus stop. (laughs) Bus stop in particular is very weird. (laughs) I guess it's because it's just, they didn't really make it, because at the bus stop there are like a couple of trees that you can cut down and they naturally regrow. I guess it's just using like the generic map code or whatever of Hmm. being able to grow trees and therefore you must be able to place things because that's how you would grow a tree except it normally plants those tree or trees automatically so you wouldn't have to do it but it's just using the same code base or whatever probably <laughs> but yeah if you ever see like a stardew speedrun or whatever they're all extremely strange particularly depending on some of the speedrun categories where it's like getting to a million as fast as possible or whatever where you just I was watching a part of one the other day, but it gets to the point where you're like, you're making, you're going to the bus stop to take a trip to the desert, but in order, because this is a speed run, in order to maximize your time, you're, you've like placed lines of like furnaces and kegs along the route that you walk to go to the bus stop, and then the route that you walk from the desert to go to the places in the desert. You're just basically walking alongside a line of furnaces, and you're just chucking shit in as you're walking past. Okay. <laughs> It's just like, this is kind of weird. <laughs> That's pretty weird. <laughs> but yeah, I got to the final 100% completion of Sardi, which isn't really that... It's a, It's got its own little sequence up on the like summit of the mountain or whatever, but it's not actually that interesting. It's, no, like, it's not even... It's not got much dialogue, and then it just does that thing where it's like... It does these sort of not credit sequence credit sequence where it's like here's all the enemies and here's what all the what they're oh, all called and that kind of thing. Nice, yeah, like Mario esque yeah. or whatever. That's kind of cool. I guess because a credit sequence would, wouldn't be that long for Starly because it's made by like one guy. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure 
the credits on the main menu, when you press that, it's literally just one screen. It doesn't even scroll. <laughs> <laughs> just a static. Yeah. So there's that. I got through Stardew. And now I guess I don't ever have to play that again, probably, except, you know, maybe more, they'll still, maybe he'll still continue to patch it. <laughs> more mods and patches and DLC. Well, I never have played Star, Stardew modded. I mean, that is something that I could do because there's some quite, well, the classic one is like Stardew Extended, where it's just like there's a whole bunch of new shit and new people and all that kind of stuff. So I might maybe get around to trying that at some point. And I, I don't know what, like, the modding, like, how awkward it is to get mods to work in Stardew. What the actual structure of that is like. Are you going to need a mod manager or are you, or is it just a file you can chuck shit into? Mm. So I don't know. And then the only other thing that I played really and not that much yet was update four for Satisfactory has gone into the experimental branch. So it's not even in the actual early access yet. Hmm. Yeah. But I I went back into that for a minute, but of course, naturally, because I started over, haven't really seen any of the experimental new stuff. Well, no, I've seen some of it. There's like a few new bits of like early, early, I don't know what you call it. It's like it's tech, but it's not like tech for the factory exactly. Like the one thing that I've got so far is the zip line, which is like it lets you use the power lines as zip lines, basically. <laughs> You just have like a hook that you hook onto That's the handy. power lines and then you can just casually ride it around. It's Bioshock Infinite. Yep. And you can go uphill as well, only much slower. And apparently not. There, there, there is an angle limit as far as I can tell because I was trying to go use it to basically climb up this huge cliff and I was like, nope, that cable is too vertical to manage to zip line up it or down it. It just won't let you attach if it's too steep. But it is quite an awkward system as well because, you know, there's a power pole every 20 feet or whatever that you have to like jump around and then rehook the zip line onto oh, the next blimey. bit of cable. <laughs> Which is kind of fun, but like also kind of awkward. And I wonder if it would work better with the like wall attachment points that don't have a pole. Like, would it still de- detach you when you hit like the node? Or would it, would it be close enough to the next cable you would just be able to ride over it? Because obviously the pole it actually physically gets in your way, rather than with the wall attachment points, you might just be able to skip over them almost, maybe. But yeah, I went back to play some of that, and then like, I've never been sure if it's intentional, but that game basically has bunny hopping. <laughs> in what way? Cause, well, because you have you have. Uh, the slide, like if you're on a downward slope and you crouch, it turns in, and you're sprinting, it turns into a slide. So you actually gain momentum and you can slide down hills and stuff, or slide down legends. your conveyor belts. Yeah, slide down conveyor belts. Okay, so that's like cool as a movement option. But if you like, if you slide for like a split second and then jump you basically accelerate way- you accelerate to sliding speed but maintain it through the air so you- then if you keep doing that over and over you can actually pick up more momentum than you even should be able to get and then you just basically bunny hop everywhere <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work if you start going uphill though like you can maintain some of the momentum if you only jump but if you try and slide because you can't slide going uphill it like basically cancels it. So you have to remember to only hit the crouch button on down slopes while you're trying to do the bunny hopping. <laughs> but it does make you go very fast, like way faster than you can run even with the blade runners, which make you faster by default. And then when they're like, not murdering robots. Yeah. Whatever. And then the zip lane is like almost pointless because the bunny hopping is faster. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, the zip line is good for, like, if you go up, want to go up a cliff. Especially because, you know, you can build shit anywhere. You can just quickly put up a pointless power line that goes to nowhere and then just zip line up it. <laughs> and then disassemble <laughs> it afterwards. I mean, you used to be able to basically do that with, with conveyors. Like, if you wanted to go climb up a cliff and you were like, I'm in the middle of nowhere, but, you know, I've got, a, I've got resources in my inventory. I can just quickly build a conveyor and just walk up it and then disassemble it afterwards. <laughs> like death stranding <laughs> yeah although you know there's much easier no, exactly. ways to do that yeah, death, death, <laughs> death stranding <laughs> makes you get there first right <laughs> and, then, and then, you, then you have to build a route that you, you, you use later okay 
more convenient than Death Stranding. Than <laughs> like almost every other game. <laughs> and yeah. then there's a there's a few other like things that I haven't really messed around with that I could be like they changed the way that the jump pads work so that you can actually aim them basically <laughs> it, like it shows a hologram line that shows you the actual trajectory so you can properly line them up because so, the whole point of the jump pads was it was meant to be useful in theory but the trouble was that like you had the jump pads and then you had like the landing pad which was basically just this big blob of goop that you fall into that absorbs all your all your momentum but there was no way to tell where the jump pads would send you. <laughs> so you just had to like guess right. okay. or just or just jump on it and hope you don't die on the first impact <laughs> and then be like, okay, this is where I need to build the, the landing pad. Mm. But now they've just got, got like an actual holographic line that shows you the arc and then yeah, you, can, it's gonna go. <laughs> you can scroll the mouse wheel to actually angle the jump pads so you can actually make precise... You can even like chain them together so you can just have like one jump pad land on the next jump pad and just build like a whole string of jump pads to chuck you around. It's like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. But I was thinking about doing that for this like where the coal that I'm trying to use, the nearest coal deposit is like there's this whole route where you can go up this slope and then, then there's like a, a rock bridge and then there's this bit where you have to go through a bunch of poisonous gas and then you come up this up over this crater lake and then you get to the coal and I was like, that's way too inconvenient. But there is just this giant cliff on the other side, so maybe I could just build like a bounce pad tower and just bounce up that cliff. <laughs> it's not gonna help when I actually need to drive trucks there, of course, I guess. Probably will still have to have to use all the slopes. Or maybe not. Maybe I could actually just after I built the jump pad tower up there, I could like attach a conveyor belt elevator onto the side of that and just bring the coal down and then have the trucks load up at the bottom of the cliff instead <laughs> that would probably be better although that is generally the problem with that game of like it's way easier to just build ridiculously long conveyor belts than it is to <laughs> go through all the hassle of it making the truck routes mainly because you have to like you know clear a route like you have to build bridges over holes and all that and like level the terrain so the trucks don't get stuck right yeah Whereas with conveyor belts, you just point and click and it just does it. <laughs> so, is it like the cost a problem then for that stuff? Like, is it just is it the conveyor is just cheap enough that it doesn't really make sense to build trucks? Or well, I mean, the faster conveyors get more expensive more quickly, but it's still like you know, <laughs> just, just love that moment in the giant bomb. Quick look where Vinny's truck just <laughs> sailed over the cliff. Yeah. That is the other problem with the trucks, of course, is that, like, because you have to use that route programming thing, it's kind of finicky, even though it's a very cool system. And you can only really run one truck per route as well, although that's not usually a problem. Because they can store so much. But yeah, the conveyor belts are probably cheap enough that it's like, you just throw down a conveyor route most of the time, but it's kind of ugly as well. Yeah. I've never got to the point of actually using trains in that game either, which is the other thing that I... But then that's, that's like... That's basically like conveyors again, but even more inconvenient, where you have to build rails and like train stations. It's almost the same as Factorio, where it's just like running a real long conveyor belt is way easier than bothering to set up a train and all the scheduling and <laughs> all that stuff. As long as it... You don't have to worry about the direction in which signals are pl facing. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think in Satisfactory, they don't, literally just don't bother. Like, the trains just phase through each other and it doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yeah, the update 4 is mainly a, the end of the tech tree getting updated, the nu right. nuclear stuff, basically. Right, the late game stuff. Which I never got round to attempting. The nuclear energy seems, well, I don't know how it is now, but it's always seemed like a big hassle, mainly because of the, of the waste. Because <laughs> the thing is, the whole thing about Satisfactory and their like fake corporation that you're working for or whatever, like their catchphrase is they do not waste. <laughs> so throughout the whole game, you're like, oh, I, we, you know, everything gets put to use and all this stuff. But then you end up with nuclear waste and you're like, well, what the fuck do I do with this then? <laughs> right. And the answer is you 
put it somewhere and just can't, hopefully never go near it and get irradiated. <laughs> it's just that real life. <laughs> yeah, it's like that kind of goes against their philosophy if they haven't come up with a way to use this shit, or at least, you know, some better solution to storing it than putting it in a crate. <laughs> Come on, Cave Johnson, you can figure something out. But then apparently this update, it's like we've introduced a use for the nuclear waste, which is kind of real in the in the real way, which is filter out the useful plutonium or whatever and make even worse nuclear waste. Right. <laughs> so like it's not actually you've just turned it into an even more of a problem. Just a different item that's even more radioactive. <laughs> Great. Thanks. <laughs> Slightly less of it, but it's worse. Yeah. And the funny thing is about the about the radiation is when you you can get like a pet that you can you find these wild lizard doggo things in the world. And you're <laughs> lizard like, doggos. That's what they're called. <laughs> you can befriend them and then, then they'll just follow you around. But if you talk to them or pet them or whatever, they have like an inventory that opens up and they can just like find random items. So like hmm. occasionally every 20 minutes or whatever, you can just be like, what have you got? And they'll be like, oh, you found a power slug, that's kind of useful. <laughs> but then occasionally, they'll just bring you a barrel of nuclear waste, and then you'll you'll be just be casually standing around your factory, and suddenly your guy account will start going, oh, it's like, ah, <laughs> the dog is ready right to run! <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, that is pretty funny. It's like a dwarf fortress type thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, the dwarf can't, it can't get to work because it can't find its left shoe. Yep, exactly. Hello. Uh, apparently something went wrong with our recording there. Um, so uh, we're going to try and fix it as best we can. And uh, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks for a sidecast that doesn't have technical issues. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Assuming we're in our new studio by then, we may have to wait for that. But uh, either way, you're going to get new content eventually. And if uh, while you're waiting, you can check out our YouTube channel uh, where we've got a series of videos of me playing Deus Ex at the moment, so enjoy. My fault, and I got ambitious with the software. The software fought back. These things happen when you get <laughs> when you get in a fight with software. But I guess we still maybe, assuming this file is recoverable, have the important part of the podcast, which is the news, I guess. <laughs> yes, I mean, hope you get the news. Yeah, we should we should have the news, we should have the bulk bulk of the of what we talked about in the game section, but you would have list, probably missed a delicious conversation about moist cheese. <laughs> so, I think we just said the word moist too many times and it broke the software. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, it doesn't like moist. I mean, it's 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 well proven. That electronics and moisture do not get on. Do not mix. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll be careful next time, listeners. I mean, I'm uh, highly considering buying a whole load of silica gel from when I move house. So, like, if I have to put games consoles in storage for a bit. Right. That'll suck up all the all the... Moisture. <laughs> okay. Moisture. Oh, cool. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.